Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Affirmation Addict Podcast. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about healing your body through your thoughts, through your mind, and through affirmations. During this time where our bodies are the ones that are compromised, I really want to reinvigorate some hope into you that you do have the power to heal your body and keep your body healthy. So I hope this podcast is inspiring and helpful. You're listening to the Affirmation Attic Podcast with Pyle Agarwal. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so, so much for being here, and I'm so excited to dive into today's episode. Actually, wait, before we get started, I wanted to check with you. Have you heard about my new app? It's called Affirm It, and it's your one-stop shop for all things affirmations, manifestation, and self-healing. I really have been wanting to create something for you that truly empowers you to realize that you genuinely have everything you need within you. You don't need me. You don't need any other coaches. This app genuinely has everything you need to get that life that you've been trying to manifest, and it has gentle daily reminders, guided audio affirmations, sleep affirmations, affirmation reminders, and so much more good information, good energy, and so many things that I know will help you manifest your dreams. Because I'm so grateful for you, I'm actually offering you a free seven-day trial. And this is a genuine seven-day trial. That means you don't have to type in your credit card. You won't be automatically charged. There's no ads and you get complete access to the app as if you've already subscribed to it. So if you do want to learn more about the app, head over to affirmation-addict.com slash app, or if you're ready to dive in, head over to the iTunes app store and search for Affirm It. The Android version will be coming soon, and as soon as it's ready, I'll be sure to let you know. Now we can officially dive into today's episode. Hey there and happy Monday. I hope you are doing so, so good today. Even if you're not listening to it on Monday, I hope you are having such a good day and I hope things are going well for you. But today's episode is a really special one to me because it has come from personal experience and some of the hard personal experiences I've gone through. So this is truly an episode from my heart to yours in order to help heal and serve and empower you throughout this time where our body bodies and our health is really what is being compromised um, through the nature of our world. So I hope this podcast is coming at a perfect time for you and I hope it really inspires you. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be telling you five things you need to know about healing your health through affirmations. And so this is all tried and tested multiple times in my personal life with family members and especially in my business with my clients. And I have seen some amazing recoveries. And so this might trigger you in a little bit. This might feel contradictory. This might confuse you. And I just want to let you know that that's okay. And I just want you to hear me out with an open heart if this is something that will serve you right now, because health is something that is so important to us, but we take it for granted until something goes wrong. And I think this whole pandemic and coronavirus is really reminding us to value our health and really reconsider that. So I think this podcast is the perfect time to teach you how to heal your health and how to even make your health even better when you're feeling okay. But if you're not feeling okay, if your health is sacrificed right now, what to do and how to use your mind to conquer that because our minds are so, so powerful. And I fully believe that our health is 100% directly in correlation with our minds. So the first tip I want to give you is your body is always, always listening to you. I know it sounds crazy, but if you think about it, each part of our body has millions and trillions of cells. We are basically made up of cells. So every single cell is a living organism in our body and every single cell is connected to our energy and it hears what you're thinking. It feels what you're thinking. It feels your vibrations. So something I really like to think about and remind myself when I am trying to heal my health is that my body is listening to me. So what I mean is when I am 
talking about what I'm going through, when I keep saying, oh, I'm sick and I have a fever and I don't feel good and I feel this, I feel that, our bodies are listening to that and our bodies are working to make that come true. I think we forget about the fact that, yes, I'm just stating what's going on, but the power of your word, your body is literally obeying the words you speak. So when you are in a sick state of being, if your health is compromised, I highly recommend being super mindful about what you're thinking and what you are saying because your body hears you just as much as your mind. And so... I really invite you to remember when you aren't feeling good, maybe try not reaffirming how sick you feel, how bad you feel. I know you really want to tell your mom and say, hey, I don't feel good and I need help and things like that. But there's other ways of reframing those words where you're not reaffirming it into your life. And I know it sounds difficult, but it really makes a difference. And a personal example is that When um, I had my family member in the hospital, they were diagnosed with a really, really sad and difficult disease. We actually didn't talk about it. We didn't use the word. We didn't talk about what that disease was, not because we're avoiding it, because we didn't want to draw more energy to it. And this doesn't mean that you are pretending like it's not happening. It just means that you're not drawing attention towards it. You're talking about it when necessary. If the doctors came into the room at the hospital, of course they would say it, but we really tried to consciously monitor as much as possible until it was necessary to not talk about it. Another thing that goes along with your body is always listening is that you can talk to your body. You can talk to your cells. So instead of saying affirmations in the form of I am, say it in the forms of the body parts or the parts of your body that are being affected. So say you have a fever. Maybe you can say my body is cooling down. My body is at normal temperature. Or you can talk to your head. If you have a headache, you can say, head, I love you. I know you're in pain, but I allow you to release that pain. So really just softening your approach to sickness and health and really thinking about it as different parts of your body that are craving for your love and attention. That I've noticed has helped me so much daily if I have a backache, if my head is hurting, if my eyes are being strained, if my throat starts to get a little sore, I start talking to it and trying to just deepen my relationship with that part of my body. It's a really beautiful process. So number one is just to remember Remember, your body is always, always, always listening to you. Number two, this is for more serious matters. Um, Like if you're in the hospital, if you are going through a really major thing, is to question everything. Now, for those of you who are in the healthcare field who are doctors, this is absolutely not meant to cause any disrespect. This is just another way of looking at it and trying to think of the power of the mind for certain people. Um, This is not to discredit any of the science and the knowledge that we have in the world. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because this immensely, immensely helped my family um, when we had a really major family um, trauma come up really with his health. And so I'll explain that more. But I really recommend questioning everything because it feels like when we have health problems, when we aren't feeling good, we tend to just think that we're wrong and doctors or authorities or even like nutritionists or whoever it is in regards to our health, they know everything. I know nothing. That's what I've noticed as a pattern, even in myself, that when I go to the doctor's office or when I go somewhere, I just ignore all signs of my body. I ignore my intuition completely and put full faith in them, which is beautiful. Like that is their job. They've studied this. But I also have to remember that my body knows better than anybody else what's right for me if I allow myself to listen to it. So what I mean by questioning everything is if somebody gives you a diagnosis, like in major cases in cancer or in really life-threatening diseases, like you have two years or you have two weeks, I invite you to question that. I invite you to challenge that. Why does that have to be true? Miracles are real. Miracles happen. I've experienced so many miracles. And I'm going to tell you a story that happened with my family member where they told him, He would not be able to walk 
for two years. He was paralyzed from his hips down. They told him he would not be able to walk for two years. And I told my family member, I was like, you need to ignore that. And I want you to question that and challenge that. And this isn't anything I did. He had to do this for himself. It was him and his body. I was just guiding him. But he questioned it and he challenged it. He spoke to his legs. He spoke to his mind. He spoke to his body. He questioned the doctors. He questioned when the nurses were giving him medicine, making sure what medicines they were giving. And he said, you know what? I am going to walk in two months, not two years. I'm going to walk in two months. He made that his determination. And the doctors, when he would say that, the doctors would literally laugh at him. He got no support. They were like, well, that's never going to happen. This disease has no history of going away in two years. Um, It only has a history of staying two years or longer. Two years is your best case scenario. It was insane what the doctors would say to him in such discouraging ways. And I get that they have to prepare patients for the worst. Um, I completely understand that, but it was just really interesting to me from a mindset perspective. And so what we did, we questioned everything and believe it or not, he was walking in two months. The doctors literally did a test case on him. He became a case study as to why he could walk in two months and nobody else could walk in two months. This is my own family member. And it's so important to remember that the power of you and your mindset and your determination is more powerful than any other authority. Even me, I'm giving you this advice, but it's your responsibility and your right to question me. You are allowed to question me and you're allowed to challenge me. And I think that's something that we forget as human beings that we have more authority over our own self than anybody and especially in terms of health in our bodies we tend to give that authority away really quickly because we feel like we don't know enough but I promise you you know more your body is literally at your service not anybody else's Number three is don't keep talking about the disease. Don't keep talking about what's going on. This kind of goes hand in hand with number one. But one thing that happened with my family member is in Indian families especially, and I'm sure in a lot of cultures and families, news spreads fast, right? So when my family member was diagnosed with this life-threatening disease, it was the four of us, and which was me, my mom, my dad, my brother, we decided not to tell anybody. We kept it between the four of us and told two family friends in Arizona and then Tom's family. So those were the four. So there were 16 of us who knew about what was going on and nobody else. We didn't tell my family in India. We didn't tell the people who worked for us. I didn't tell my Instagram. We didn't tell anybody. We didn't want to put more attention towards it. And the reason is this disease is similar to cancer and really scary diseases that have very, very, very scary outcomes, especially when you Google it. You know, when you Google something and it seems a lot worse than it is. Exactly. When you Google this disease, literally the first thing that comes up is you're going to die. It comes up that you will be placed on a ventilator and you will die within two years. That's the general outcome of this disease that shows on Google. And I know my family and I know people in our community. I know people in general that if I told them the name of this disease, they would Google it they would panic and they would send, oh my gosh, I hope he doesn't die, thoughts to my family member. And we didn't want that happening. So I think the smartest thing we did is not talk about it until he started healing up. Eventually we told him, eventually they found out. But during that process, when you are in such a fragile state of being, when you are really trying to pick yourself up, you have to stay strong, you have to stay together, and you have to be really limiting. And this is something I'm just telling you as a friend, as somebody that loves you, that this was so powerful to keep within our family because I think he healed up so much faster because we didn't tell many people. And anytime they would come into the room, anytime they were coming around Basically, anytime people would come in the room, anytime the doctors would come in, anytime the nurses would come in, I basically would say, hey, you need to put a smile on your face. You need to think that he is healed. And then you walk into this room. You don't walk in with pity. You don't walk in with stress or sadness. And I would control that. I was very, very vocal in how I wanted people to walk in. And if people were being negative or showing empathy or, I mean, sympathy and feeling sorry for him, I would take them outside. I was being rude in that way. I wasn't being very kind in that way, but I know that contributed to him healing up faster. Don't keep bringing the disease in. 
and don't tell so many people. Just keep it within you and don't keep reaffirming that the disease is here. This is what it is. Oh my gosh. It's really, really powerful for you to avoid talking about the disease itself. Use your mind to focus on something else. Use your mind to focus on healing instead. For what we're going through right now for coronavirus, people are always, always talking about it. They're making memes about it. They're making all these tips. And I am too. I get it. But it depends on what energy you're creating that with. If you create it out of fear, that's going to create more of that fear. If you create it out of hope and inspiration, that'll create more of that. So just be very, very mindful of the way you're talking about it and of what you're doing with it. Number four is surround yourself with high vibration. So this kind of is an all-encompassing one where in the hospital, I surrounded basically the entire room with all my high vibration tools. I wrote about 100 affirmations on paper and put them everywhere. I had crystals. I had essential oils diffusing. I had magnets for magnet therapy. We had an acupuncture come in. Um, We had a Reiki healer. We did a lot of healing and high vibration vibrational things. And it is so important to keep the energy high. We would feed the nurses. We would buy them flowers. We'd make them our friends, show them gratitude. And we would talk to the doctors and have fun with them, really uplifting the energy. A lot of the times in hospitals, it can be such a depressing environment. And especially with everything going on, being at home, if you're in self-quarantine, if you're quarantined at home, it can be super hard to just make that a positive environment. But I invite you to whip out all your tools and write those affirmations on the wall. Words carry energy. So if you have I am healthy written on your wall, that is constantly emitting that vibration. If you have I am loved, if you have I am strong written all over your walls, that will literally emit and literally uplift the vibration of your room. And lastly, number five is don't accept the fate of your dis-ease or whatever you're going through. This is so aligned with an almost an all-encompassing one, but remember to challenge it. Whatever you accept is what you are bringing into your reality. So if you reject the disease's general outcome, if you reject what how you will feel, if you reject what that disease can bring, you're not making space for it. So what I like to do is I like to think of it as if I accept it, I'm making a home for it. I'm creating space for it. If I reject it and I remove it and do not allow it, I am literally letting it release out of my system. I'm not creating a home for it. That's my favorite way of thinking about health and wellness and disease is to remember I don't have to create a home for it. It does not have to be here. So I hope these five tips were super, super helpful in understanding that your health can be healed through your mind and through affirmations. The power of your word, the power of your belief is is what it's all about. And I know it feels like it's too easy. Why is there a huge medical field? I know it, but there's just not enough research on this yet. It will be. It's becoming. And I remember when we were at the hospital, the nurses were asking, hey, what essential oil are you doing? Who's that Reiki healer coming in? Why do you have these affirmations? People are learning. People are trying to get to this point. It's just not a mass level yet, but I know it will be soon. So I invite you to use this when you have any health issues because all health issues stem from the mind so they can be healed from the mind as well. So I want you to remember that. I want you to let yourself be the one who who's healing. So as a quick recap, the five things you need to know about healing your health through affirmations is number one, your body is always listening to you. You can talk to your cells and your cells will respond. Number two is question everything. You know your body best and even if authorities say something, you are allowed to question. Number three, Don't keep talking about the disease. Don't tell everybody about the disease. Try keeping it within a smaller circle of people who you know will honor your positivity around it. Number four, surround yourself with high vibrational things like affirmations, crystals, essential oils. Surround yourself with high vibes. Infuse the high vibrations within people who come into the area where the disease is, whether it's a hospital room or your home. Infuse high vibrations everywhere. And number five is do not accept the fate of your disease. Let yourself determine how this disease will be in your body. Let yourself be the creator of your own story. So I hope these five tips were super helpful. And if you guys need anything ever, you know you're always welcome to reach out to me. I hope this episode was helpful, informative, and uplifting. And I love you all so, so much. 
So how did you like today's episode? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it. And before you leave, I wanted to just say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for spending some time with me. If this episode or any of my content has ever inspired you, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could leave a review in the iTunes podcast app and just share this with someone you care about. The more you guys leave reviews and share this with people, the more I am able to create more content for you and that's what fuels me and keeps me going. I am so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today and until next time, I'm sending you lots of love and lots of healing energy. Bye!